So what I'm saying is, that what is time indifferent? And, and the confusion comes here. Time indifferent means that, you know what? I'm indifferent of, of doing this investment or not doing this investment. That's a completely different story. Do you agree with me, guys? So time indifferent implies that you have an alternative that is at least as good as my 10%. This 10%. Do you agree with me? Because what can happen is the following. If you tell me, oh, I'm indifferent, I don't do the investment. So what do you do with this $10? You don't do anything. You arrive into one year, what is the value of this $10 if you don't do anything? Guys, if you keep it in mm -hmm. your pocket, then after one year, what is the value of this $10? Uh, less than $10, assuming inflation. No, 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 possible. nominal value. So if I have a bill of $10, how many dollars I will have at the end of the year if I don't do anything? Ten dollars. Yes, of course. Yeah. But remember, ten dollars now are not going to be able to buy the ten kilos of sugar. So indeed, you can be indifferent at time zero, but you are not time indifferent. Make sense to you? So if you want, if you tell me I'm time indifferent, so you need to tell me you need to at least find another alternative that produces ten percent or more. So for example, some of you, I tell you, hey guys, I give you 10% and some of you tell me, oh, come on, 10% is nothing. I can invest my money in the exchange, in the stock exchanges and I can get 20. Well, that's time indifferent. Make sense to you? So I don't invest with you, I invest in another alternative. That's time indifferent. Make sense to you? So when it, we say, yes. Sorry, go. sorry, is it, is it, so it, it's like opportunity cost. It is, exactly that. I didn't want to mention that word, but indeed, this one here is, is what is known as opportunity cost. Okay, I will, uh, I will, I will, we are going to do all this in, in detail later. But make sense to you? So indifferent, please be careful when you use this word. <clears throat> if you're indifferent, investing or not investing, so this implies that basically if you are time zero, you need to buy the sugar in order to be as equivalent as here. Got it? So this implies that you need to first move your dollars into sugar, and then you are really indifferent. Now, what happens in the third case, <clears throat> if you only can buy five kilos of sugar, what do you do? So, so all this corresponds to this part here. So what about having five kilos of sugar? So this it's 11, it's yeah. It's in this ability to buy the sugar now. Yeah, so yeah, <laughs> you know what? If you know that this is gonna happen, what do you do? What is your best strategy, guys? And if you don't have an alternative, so what is your best strategy? Buy now. Exactly. So no investment, basically. If, if the inflation is very strong, buy now. Uh, well, not now, no. by now. Now, does this make sense? Guys, do you know how Venezuela is doing now? Do you, have you heard about Venezuela, hyperinflation in Venezuela? Have you heard about hyperinflationary processes in Peru in the 2000s, sorry, 1987, 1988? Inflation, guys, was around 1 million percent per year. So you can imagine the prices, how fast the prices changed. So inflation, guys, basically means that your, your $11 are not going to be able to, cap, to, to buy the 10 kilos of sugar, right? Agree with me or not, guys? So okay. it implies that you're going, to have, you're going to buy five kilos, perhaps four kilos, perhaps one kilo, perhaps one gram of sugar. So what is your best strategy? If you're in a, in, in a hyperinflationary process, what is your best strategy, guys? We already solved the, the, the problem. Buy now, I agree? Just buy now, yeah. Buy now, so what happens when you buy now? So let's do an hyperinflationary process. Inflation for me is going to be pi. So what happens when inf hyperinflation is present, the best strategy is to buy now. So what happens when everyone thinks about that? I need to buy this immediately because my money worth today 10 kilos and in, in one day is going to worth nine kilos. So what do you do when you buy? 
So basically you have a pressure of the demand side. So a lot of people demanding that demand increases. What happens when demand increases when you have a, a fixed supply? Price what happens? Rises exactly. Well. So price rises, so you're contributing with inflation. inflation. Got it? Now, this is from the from the demand side. So let me tell you. This is the demand side. Now, but what happens now? Imagine yourself in a position of the seller. Okay, so this is one. So now imagine yourselves in a position of the seller. So you are the ones that sell the product. What, what is your best strategy? Well, what happens is the following, guys. If you sell 10 kilos at $10, at $10 remember, when you sell something, okay, the price should cover what? Should cover preposition. Cost. Yeah, exactly. So basically cost. Got it? So I should be able to buy my 10 kilos of sugar also to again sell. And of course, a markup. You know, my, how, much, how much money I'm making. Make sense to you guys? So now take a look to what happens with the reposition or the costs. When I sell to you 10 kilos of sugar, I need to go to, this, to the market and I need to buy, I need to, uh, you know, I need to buy back my, my sugar. Do you agree? But what, what do you think is going to happen? When I go to buy sugar as a, as a seller, the sugar is, has increased already. Agree with me? The price has increased. So what is my, my strategy? My price should also contain something that is called a markup, an inflationary markup. So this implies if my price is 10, I need to just to protect myself, I, I give you 10% more, 11. Got it? Do you understand what is this one here? This also contributes with inflationary process. Now, what is more interesting, guys, is the following. If inflation really goes really, really fast, you are going to, buy, you are going to receive my $10, you go to replenish your, your inventories, and the $10 only buy five kilos of sugar. Make sense to you? So what you're going to do at the beginning is you're going to increase the, the inflation markup. Okay, I increase more, I increase more, I increase more. At a given point in time, you realize that no matter how fast you increase your prices to try to cover your, your costs, you're not able to catch up with, with that. So what is your best strategy, guys? Hold it. Hold it. Exactly, hold it. And I will say, hide it. And technically, guys, hide it, <laughs> because the situation is not good. So if you if you follow if you have followed or if you just read news about um, Venezuela issues, you can see that supermarkets are completely empty, completely empty. There is nothing. You cannot buy anything. And of course, you can create then appears the black markets, etc. But why this happen? Well, because there is a, a an economic reason in here that is given by this part here. You know, it is a black hole, guys. This creates inflation, this creates inflation. And uh, the worst part of everything is that as soon as inflation is not controllable, the products disappear. So if products disappear, guys, then we have, we start having a social unrest. Then we have having a lot of problems in the economy, not only in the economy, but also in the, in the society and the politics of a country. Make sense to you? Okay, so I, I, I over expanded. Sometimes I over expand, guys, but this is more and more for a, for a cultural point of view. Now, when you talk about money, guys, we need to then realize that there are two types of money. Something that we call nominal value. Okay, so $10, for example, a bill. Okay, I have $10. And something that is called real value. So what is real value is, is the nominal value adjusted by a um, purchasing power. So basically what we call inflation. Got it? So in finance, as soon as we have time in, into the equation, we always need to think about inflation. Got it? And what is really interesting, guys, this is the, the people always say this one here, $10 today worth more than $10 in the future. Do you agree? So they are basically uh, talking about this part here. There is a, a, a natural value of growth of money, and that one is given by inflation. And we're going to refine that concept later. 
Make sense to you? Guys, questions? Questions? Nope. Guys, no questions, everything is clear. Guys, clear? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay, perfect. So now let's go to the, so let's continue talking about a little about finance. So finance, guys, is basically, as I mentioned to you, is the exchange of money in time, that's all. Okay, when I say money, it can be financial, any financial instrument, but we're going to discuss that later. Now, uh, let's give, let's, let me save something. Okay, so now I can clear. So now let's talk about the, um, the, the, the markets, okay? So let's talk a little about financial markets. So again, we have two words, the markets and the financial side of the equation. So now let's start talking a little about this, these markets. What, what is a market? brings buyers and sellers together. Yeah, yeah, before it was a physical space that brings buyers and sellers. Do you agree? All together, so if they want to negotiate, they arrive to a price of equilibrium price and they negotiate. They exchange one good for another good and sometimes this other good is money. Make sense? The financial market is that. The financial market is simply a collection of buyers, sellers, investors, or, or, or people that lend, lend money that basically deal with money, okay? So that's it. Now, what type of financial markets do we have? There are a bunch, okay, classification. This is more theory, but helps us understand how the market works. So we have the short term, we have the, the, the capital markets, something that are called capital markets, and something that are, that are called uh, money markets. Okay, so uh, capital markets guys are long-term investments. So for example, you decide to do a corporation. So you, you, you invest some money in the corporation and then what you expect is that in you know, three, four, five years, the corporation is going to grow, it's going to mature and it's going to produce dividends for you. Make sense? This is capital markets. Uh, and money markets guys is more short-term investments. Okay, so I invest for up to one year. What type of uh, instruments do we have in money markets that we're going to be using in this class? Let's organize them in terms of less risky to more risky. The first and, more, and less risky guys are something that are called the T-bills. Have you heard about the T-bills? Treasury bills. Have you heard about them? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. these, these instruments here are normally known as a, at least the, the USA T-bills are known as the risk-free instruments. Got it? They give you very, very small interest rate, but you know that this interest rate is risk-free, okay? Now, risk-free, careful with inflation, okay? So just careful about inflation. So it is not completely risk-free. It is free, risk-free in, in a sense of default risk. So we believe that the government of the USA is not going to collapse, it's not going to default. So that's a, the risk-free intuition that we have here. But at this point, it is not protecting you against inflation. Now, of course, USA inflation is, is, not, is not big. You agree? It's less than 2% now, and we're having troubles with, with this number now. We're going to discuss more this, about this later. Okay, what other instrument do we have in terms of a uh, case, okay, kind of less secure, but provides me more money? Have you heard about the certificates of deposit, CDs? Yes. Yes, okay, so these are term deposits, do you agree? So what is the meaning of term deposits? So this implies that you are going to have a lock-in period. Before it was one year, but now I have seen uh, six months, and even I have seen lately three months. So basically this implies that you have a, 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 you know, a kind of better interest rate with respect to the T-bills. However, you cannot move your money for a period of time. And if you move the money, they simply penalize you. And at the end of the day, you can be losing money for all these penalties. 
Got it? But if you have money that you're not going to use for six months, why not? Make sense to you? Now, next to this comes the CPs, commercial papers. Okay, so this now corresponds to corporations. So this is a very short term debt instrument, uh, maximum one month in general. And so corporations, what they do is they issue, for example, they need liquidity for working capital. And they say, guys, you know what? We pay you 6% per year. Okay, and please lend me for uh, just one month. So of course, these ones here are more riskier than the CDs that are normally issued by banks. These are issued by corporations, but normally also guys remember that you have corporations and corporations. So what you can do is you can buy from, from corporations that are well known, AAA, top and most secure corporations, etc. And as soon as the, 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 the time, the duration, the maturity of, the, of these documents is very short. So, you know, they have risk, but they are less risky than bonds, for example. Questions, guys, up to now. Uh, excuse me. Uh, yep. I just want to ask, why would corporations uh, go to the market for it if they, if they can just get it from a bank? Yeah, well, there are a couple of, of reasons. One of them is that corporations, remember that if we can do CPs, normally the CPs are faster and cheaper. Got it? Unless you have a, you're a big, big corporation that you have lines of credit of Citibank, uh, JP Morgan, etc. But in general, all corporations that really need liquidity very quickly, they don't want to, to, to use all their lines of credit, they can use CPs. Okay? It is a very easy way to raise money very quickly, raise money, <clears throat> very short term. And the interest rate normally are, are better than, than banks. And now in developing countries, guys, we don't see a lot CPs now, now more, more in time, but this is one, one really good way of, of financing for corporation working capital. So this is basically for working capital. Okay, so what is working capital guys? We're going to see in a minute. Basically the liquidity you need in order to, to, to survive and to create business, got it? Now, all types of instruments, guys, that we're going to see and are something that are called banks acceptances, BAs. Do you have an idea how BAs work? Have you heard about banks acceptances? No. No? Okay, so let me, uh, let me draw around here, perhaps. You know, guys, imagine that we do a lot of uh, international trade. Okay, so we do international trade. Now, in international trade, of course, you have someone in USA, perhaps us, and someone in Africa, in South Africa, let's say. Got it? And our friend in South Africa produces beautiful products that you wish to have in USA to sell. Got it? So basically, here comes a, a, a trust issue. Do you agree? So the South African guy is going to tell me, okay, pay me first and then I send you my products. An American guy is going to say, wait, wait a second, send me, send me first your products and then I pay you. So there is a, a symmetric information here. Do you see that? And there is a potential of someone simply disappearing. So there are multiple mechanisms, guys, but one of them and that is well known and well used in the, um, in the industry is the BA. So the BA works in the following way. So you have a bank in USA and then you have a bank in, in South Africa, bank or a financial institution, not necessarily a bank. So what you do is you deposit the money in here and at the same time you present the terms. So you tell them, okay, this guy, you, you know, I want to buy this product from this guy from South Africa and the product description is this one here, it should be in these terms and this should be free on board, no? Uh, so these guys should put this, this product in a, in, a, in a ship with insurance, etc. So there are different terms of this one here. So once this guy does that, so imagine this guy puts this in a, in a ship. Okay. And the bank here verifies that indeed the product has satisfied all the terms here. Oh, sorry. And this bank simply tells this bank, Bank USA tells this bank, you know, I have money for my client that I will give you. So this is a BA. It's not real money. It tells you, I have money for my client that I'm going to free to you 
once the product of the South African producer goes into, into the ship and the ship goes, is, is coming to USA. Make sense? And then this guy is now is secure that this guy is going to pay them because now the responsibility is given by the banks. So if this guy disappears, I don't care because if I ship my product and even though this guy disappear, this bank is going to pay me when I satisfy these conditions. Make sense? Also, the, the, the American is going to be, you know, it's going to be okay because he knows that no money is going to move from his bank to this bank and this bank to this guy and, and, unless there is a proof that indeed the product was shipped in, 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 this, in this ship here. That was shipped in this ship here. This is a, a BA, guys. Make sense to you? So, they're, so the bank's like an intermediary? Yes. So they, they're, they're, just, they're just like taking the risk away from both buyer and seller. That's it. That's it. And normally, you know, the, the dollars, if you are an unknown, if you are here, if you are this guy and unknown to the bank, normally you need to put 100% of the money. But if you're if you are already a client of the bank for with some years of experience, they know you very well, you, you are not going to disappear, you can put 50% of the money, you can put 20%. I, I have seen corporations put in 25% of the money. That's it. You see? And they, they wait, the 75% comes when this part is going out. So one day before, they put the, the next 75% and everything moves smoothly. So this provides also liquidity to this guy. You know? but remember everything is based on reputation so the bank this bank here is not going to accept that if, if you simply are, un are an unknown individual make sense and of course they charge you you need to give these dollars plus a fee you know it's, it's always that, that the bank makes a money for the for a fee in this in this transaction and also they make money in exchange rates if there is any exchange rate involved here okay you get it Uh, perhaps we can talk about repos. Yeah, this is also another interesting instrument. Have you heard about repos? Maybe. Yep, maybe. Okay, guys. So imagine now, so repos work in the following way. These, these are quite used in, in financial markets, but also in real markets. Okay, so imagine that you are here. Imagine that you have IBM shares. Okay, so these are the shares of IBM. And imagine guys that you need money because you need working capital or, or you need something urgent and you, you don't want to sell these IBM shares. And then you have a, another partner here, another individual here that has the money. Okay, but he's not going to be willing to lend you the money unless you put some collateral to them. So, and this is that the repo. So the repo is simply an agreement in which you, as the, as the owner of the, of the papers, give this guy as a collateral, this in, uh, in IBM papers, shares. And this guy receiving, when he receives the collateral, well, normally we have centralized clearing houses here. So we have now centralized clearing houses. I, I will talk in a, in a minute about them. But the, the most basic transaction happens without, without them. So, and this guy is going to give you the dollars. You see that? You understand? So this guy is protected with the IBM shares. But what is interesting, you are still the owner of the shares. When do you recover the ownership of the shares? Well, after, you know, after two days or three days or one week maximum, you return to these guys, the dollars plus the interest, because you need to pay an interest to that. And these guys are going to return your papers to you. Your IBMs go back to you. Make sense to you guys? <laughs> So the, sorry. So I remember I uh, when I was working, I would always hear the term reverse repos. So reverse repos when you just return everything. Yes. Everything is back to like back to normal. Yes, exactly that. Okay. When we when we do the complete circle. Okay. Okay. Now, issues here. <laughs> you know the issue here. The main issue here is the following. That imagine guys that you receive the money and then you give the, the equivalent in IBM. So imagine that you, you needed hundred dollars. This guy gave you hundred dollars and then you give them hundred dollars in papers. Okay. 
So what happens if the value of IBM decreased to, to 90, for example? So what is the incentive of this guy? Simply disappear, right? <laughs> Why should I give you? Because I have $100 versus something that's worth 90, so I can disappear. That makes sense? Well, in theory, you disappear. But, but you, you have the incentive to, to default, correct? Yeah. So what, what do you do in this case? So normally what happens is that when you say if you want 100, you add to this one something that is called a margin. So you don't accept 100, you accept 150, for example. Depending on how, how unknown you are, you request in papers, more papers to protect yourself. So this can go, I, I have seen this one even to 75%. So if I give you $100, you need to give me in papers 175%. Got it? And this depends basically on volatility of the market. So if the market is very volatile, so you don't know the price of, of, of the IBM, or when this guy is w very well unknown. So no one knows this guy and perhaps he disappears. So I, I prefer to be protected. Make sense? Now, what happens in the, in the other situation? So imagine, so this one here, the, the, the one that gets the money. So let's call this individual A and let's call this individual B. So A has a probability of default, increases probability of default because he can disappear. Got it? He doesn't want to pay anymore. But also guys can happen the reverse. What happens if this one here, it was a hundred per, per, you know, per share or something like that. Now this jumps into 150. So who has the incentive to disappear? This uh, guy did 100, but now he has documents that are worth 150. So B has the counterparty risk. <laughs> so this guy can disappear. And, and this happens, guys. And in 2008, 2009, during the, the great crisis, uh, the financial crisis, uh, a lot of these transactions disappear. Make sense? So that's why in time, the, the things that are working now, guys, are happening through a centralized clearinghouse. So what is a centralized clearinghouse? So imagine the central transaction, but instead of this guy giving the, the, the shares to this guy and this guy giving the money to this guy, what I do is I simply give the shares to the centralized entity. There's like an exchange and they keep this, this document for me. And these guys goes or gives the money for this one here. Everything stays in, in a clearinghouse. So this guy gives, once they receive the money, they keep the paper and they basically give the money here. And this one here, of course, with a margin, etc. So with this one here, what they are trying to do is they are trying to disappear these, these two types of risks. The probability of default is disappearing, is basically decreases with a margin. And the counterparty risk disappears because now this guy, even though the, the shares are going up, 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 he cannot get access to the shares. The shares belong or, are, or stay in the centralized clearinghouse. Got it? So you are going to be safe, you're going to be happier without doubting about this guy disappearing from, from the equation. Make sense? So the, the, the transaction is again called repo. So it's the same with centralized clearinghouse or without centralized clearinghouse, the, the transaction is called repo. Make sense to you? Yes. Yes? Yeah. Questions, no questions? Okay, so let's go a little more now into the following. So let's go into a corporation, guys. Okay. Let's go into an understanding how corporation works. So now, guys, a corporation really <clears throat> can be understood from, from the point of view of a balance. Have you heard about the, the balance sheet? Have you, have you seen a balance sheet before? Yes. Yes. So basically, guys, I will just draw, this is part of, uh, of the first half of the class, okay? Oh, by the way, guys, the midterm, I don't know when exactly is going to be the midterm, okay? We're going to know that uh, when I, I will give you at least two weeks in advance notice. Okay, but we don't know exactly when this is going to happen. Perhaps mid-October, end of October. I'm not completely sure. Depends on where, where we are in the class. Okay, so I have my, my balance sheet. And basically, the balance sheet, guys, 
gives me the financial position of a corporation. So that's why they say balance sheet uh, at end of December, for example, 2019, right? It has a position, it has a, a date. So normally guys, this one here, all this part here, all, all this part in here, uh, let me let me use another color. No, I'm liking this stuff. So all this part here, okay, are called assets. Now, the half, well, not the half, but the, the upper part of this part of the, of the balance are called liabilities. Liabilities. And the lower part of the, of the balance sheet, shareholders equity. Got it? Now in assets, of course, you are going to have short term, long term, we're going to do the details later. So we have short term assets, long term assets, the same here, you're going to have short term liabilities, you're going to have long term li liabilities, short term, long term. Okay, we're going to go into the details later. At this point, it's, it's, not, it's not useful. And of course, uh, the, the shares, ordinary shares, preferred shares, etc. Okay, so what, what I'm interested, guys, is in the following. What is the, the, what a corporation does? Basically, it uses its assets to produce what? Basically, something that is called, they use the assets to produce value. So what is value? Well, value is simply, if you buy something for 10, you can sell it for 15. So you are adding value to what you have been simply buying, right? In terms of money is that you're creating a profit. Okay, make sense to you? Now, <laughs> how the corporation funds its activities. Okay, here we go, corporation and financial markets. And you're gonna see how they relate. Now guys, let me write the corporation around here. This is my corp. And then I have the financial markets here. So what type of financial instruments we find in the financial markets? Well, many, but I will just discuss a couple of them. I have debt and I have equity. And a corporation, what they have is basically, they have their assets to produce value. Make sense? Now, debt, how do you repay debt, guys? What is the, the, the how, what is the, in which form, how do we call the repayment of debt? We repay debt plus the value of the debt is the interest. Agree? And what is the, the value of, uh, of equity? Well, interest rates that later correspond to interest. What do we relate to equity? How owners are, are compensated for having equity? How do we call that? Dividend. Exactly, dividends. Okay, so what happens in the market is the following. Corporations, they have assets, they have good, good prospects, good businesses, etc. They go to the financial markets. Financial markets give them money you know, liquidity. These guys use their assets to produce value. And once they have produced value, of course they need to do a bunch of things with the, with the value created. First of all, they need to, first, this is the order. They need to pay debt, okay? So part of the value that is created goes directly to pay debt and interest rates. And interest, do you agree? The second piece of the equation, well, is, is what? Well, the, the third piece, the last piece of the question is this guy, equity. So you also compensate your owners, giving them dividends. What else? What else, guys? Of course, they can do reinvestments, do you agree? 
So they can have part of the, of the money they have produced, the value they have created, simply and reinvest that in the corporation. It's cheaper, cheaper than going to debt and cheaper to go, in, go into equity. Now, what else? What else, what other use of the, of the value produced by the corporation is used for? Where? Uh, are we missing something? We have debt, equity, reinvestments. What else? There is one big player that we're forgetting here. Buy back the shares. Who? Uh, in, uh, yes, no, but this is not a regular part of the equation. Who's missing? Who's, who, we are missing one guy from the equation. Who's this guy? A very important guy. We don't like him. We don't like them. But taxes? What? Taxes. <laughs> yes. Taxes. So the government. Here we go. Taxes. Okay, so that's the complete circle. That's, a, that's the way, guys, in which, <clears throat> in which financial markets relate to, to corporations. And you can see here, guys, this is basically the structure. So the, the assets, debt, and equity build my balance sheet. Do you agree? Make sense? Mm -hmm. This part here, guys, where this part here comes, it's not, it appears in the balance sheet, you're going to see, <clears throat> but the only thing that appears in the balance sheet is this part here. I will explain you how. And we're going to go into the details later, but let me explain you how. So where do I see, where do I pay taxes? Taxes, remember, are paid on the, on the value that has been produced. Okay, so this implies on the profits. So there is another financial statement, okay? I, I told you there is the balance here, but there is another one that is called a PL. Profits and losses. Now, what is a PL? <clears throat> the PL gives me the economic position. So basically have a position. Have I, have I made money? or not with my, with my assets. That's the information that you get here. In general, guys, the, the p and I will just go um, here, yep. Uh, in, in general, what we have, guys, is we have revenues. So my sales. Oh, what's going on? Revenues. Then I have my cost of goods. Then if I subtract this minus this, I have my gross profits. Below this one here, I have other expenses, like management, marketing. etc. And then you have one expense that is not cash expense, that is depreciations, for example. Guys, at this point, it's simply an introduction, so don't, don't, don't stress with this one here. Then we have uh, income and uh, financial, financial income or expense. And then we have earnings before, oh, sorry, here normally the people say, oh, sorry, ah, let me delete this part here. This is what the people call earnings before interest and taxes. Oh, sorry, an appreciation, but this, I name it. Earnings before uh, interest and taxes. Then we have here the um, financial income or expense. Then we have earnings before taxes. And then you have the taxes. And then after the taxes, you have the net profit. Make sense? Now, taxes are here. The net profit, guys, what do you do with a net profit? You can do two things with net profits. What are these two things? 
either or. So you can do both if you want to. One of them, of course, is paying dividends. And the other one is what? Reinvesting. Agree? So if you distribute everything, so everything goes on dividends, there is no relationship between the PNL. <coughs> well, there is, but there is no clear and direct relationship between the PNL and the, and the balance because there is nothing that changes the value here. Now, if you reinvest, reinvestment guys affect the shareholders' position. So the shareholders have a, a larger stake in the corporation. Reinvestments. So we have reinvestments, we have taxes, financial income expenses, we have here the interest rates. So everything is computed in here. Questions? Questions, guys? Valentina, Mariam. No Any questions. questions? No questions, are you sure? Yeah. Good, good. Okay, so now this is a brief introduction of what we are going to be dealing, guys. So the first part of the class is going to be dealing with uh, this type of, uh, let me, let me. This type of things, we need to understand interest rates because dividends are also related to interest, are different names, but interest. Okay, so what we are going to be focusing our first part of the class is how interest rates work, how we're going to use them for understanding this, this type of uh, financial transactions. And once we understand interest, we're going to move into <clears throat> a, another type of, of, of interest or a financial instrument here we're going to be dealing with discounts, just very quickly discounts, and here we're going to deal with bonds, okay, very quickly. And once we have all the understanding of uh, discounts and bonds, we're going to do a uh, financial accounting, right? So we are going to do how, how the accounting works in this part here that allows us to understand all this system here. This is the first part of the class, guys. Make sense? Make sense? Yes. 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 Okay, so this was part one. Part two of the class, that is basically after the second, after the first midterm, is going to deal with portfolio management. So we're going to, to deal a lot in terms of, if I have money and I want to invest, so how can I create a portfolio? Got it? So in this class, guys, we're going to talk about capital allocation, So basically, how much money I save at a risk-free interest rate, so it can be the bank if you want, and how much money I will invest in the risky portfolio. I will show you how to, to build this stuff later. Then, in a, hopefully, we have up to security allocation. We're going to discuss a little about security allocation. That is basically, guys, now what I do is I break my 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 risky portfolio into securities, security types. So for example, here, my risky portfolio is going to have some bonds, it's going to have equities. Perhaps I can add some derivatives, etc. Commodities, etc. And then finally, I'm not sure we are gonna have time to do this is uh, sorry this is this is asset allocation okay this is asset allocation and security allocation is uh, is going to be the last one so in security allocation guys so what i will do is for example now from equities i want to invest in ibm on ibm amazon Alcoa, etc. You see? So you go to individual names. 
I want to invest in, in euros, USD, whatever, currencies, etc. Make sense? This is security allocation. I, I'm not sure we're going to have time to do number three, but number one and two for sure we're going to cover. It depends on how fast we, we, we move, otherwise we can cover all this stuff. But in general, we don't cover number three. Make sense to everyone? Yeah. So questions. So we move. I'm not clear. Okay. Now guys, let's start with uh, at least the basics of the class, okay? So let's start talking about <clears throat> uh, interests. Now I will just I will just mention this stuff. I will not develop this in in this class, but indeed there are two types of interest rates. Sorry, it is interest rates. Okay, let's define first of all what is interest versus interest rate, just to be sure. So imagine that you have hundred here, and then you are going to pay hundred ten here. Okay, so the interest how much money you have paid, this is the absolute number, in interest is going to be 110 minus 100, do you agree? So my interest is equal to 10. What is my interest rate? I will just write a small i. My interest rate is always future minus present over present. So this is equal to 0 0.1 and we use percentages, this is equal to 10%. So this is a relative term, so this is relative term, this is the absolute term. So that's why I always tell you, we need to work with absolute and relative. Make sense? Everyone is following me here? Yeah. Okay, good. Now, there are two types of interest rates, guys. The simple interest rate, we're not going to cover this one here. Simple rate. Okay, so the, what is crucial here, interest do not earn interest. Okay, so this is the, the basic concept. And the second one, the one that we're going to be there developing in this class, guys, is a compounding. Interest rate. Of course, interest, earn interests. Okay. Now, before going into interest rates, let's introduce something that is called uh, the cash flows. So a cash flow, guys, it looks something like this. You have an inflow, you have an outflow, of course, one or many. You have time, so the components are going to be inflow, outflow, time, and there is one missing component, the interest rate that you don't see here, got it? The interest rate, guys, makes the cash flows equivalent. This concept is going to be crucial, okay? I, I will always use this one. So what, what is the idea of equivalent? Now guys, in finance, sorry, in accounting, you can do 110 minus 100, do you agree? Even though they are two different pieces of, uh, two different periods of time, you can subtract, you can add, you can do whatever you want with two types of, of monies, with monies in two, time, in two different times, agree? Now guys, you as a finance guys, you can never do that. Because of what? Because of what guys? Time value of money. Exactly, because monies in different periods of time have different times, different values because of time. Make sense to you? So if you want to do, if you want to talk, if you want to compare 110 with this 100, you, need, you can do two things. One thing is that you move this one here 
to the present. So this process is called discounting. So you discount. Or you can take this 100 to the future. And then you have future 100 versus this 110 works. Present 110 versus 100 works. How do you call this process here? Compounding. You compound. Now, what rate do you use to make this, this, in, this money's equivalent is the interest rate. So for example, what is the interest rate in this, in this example? Well, we did it already, 10%. Agree with me? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, so this 10%, guys, is the one that makes 100 equivalent 100 at T0, sorry, 100 at T0, equivalent to 110 at T1. Got it? So that's, that's, what, that's what E, I stands for. It simply makes the cash flows equivalent. So you can move the cash flows to the, to the future or from the future to the present, and then you can do any type of uh, operations that you, that you want. Make sense? Are you copying? Are you following? Yeah. Excellent. So now let's, there are two types of, of cash flows. One cash flow is an inflow first and an outflow later. And the other one is an inflow first, uh, sorry, an outflow first and an inflow later. So this one here is where you receive money first and then you need to pay. This is called financing, financing cash flows. And the other one is you sacrifice first money with the expectation that receive something to the future. This is called investment. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, can you go back again? Sorry, I, I was like, I was waiting. Yeah. Right. Uh, so what I mean is that there are two types, two basic types of cash flows. One is when you have an an, an inflow first, so you receive money, you receive thousand dollars, for example, but you need to pay thousand dollars plus interest in the future. So this is called a financing a cash flow. Mm -hmm. And the other one is you do first the money, you put first the money, you sacrifice money now with the expectation of receiving some money in the future. This is called investment, right? So these are two types of... Oh, so that's how you raise the money. Right? Yes. Yeah, oh, this one here, yes. Well, you know what? This looks more like you go to a bank to buy a car, so they give you the money, but you know that you need to return the money. And of course, you can have not only one up and down, you can have several ups and downs, okay? Okay, guys, I think. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I think I have, uh, yeah, at least I can do something more. Let's start and, talking, yes. So, and then investment is when you give part of the shares of the company? To yeah, basically you sacrifice money now. So remember the concept of, of investment is you sacrifice money today with mm -hmm. expectation to receive money in the future. You see that? So that's in an investment. So I put $100 in my corporation and I expect that this $100 in a corporation is gonna create $300. You see that? That's uh, the main expectation. Make sense? Okay. Okay. Now let's start talking about compounding, compounding interest rates. Oh, no. Just give me one second, guys.
Okay, so, so what is compounding interest rate? So the basic concept here, guys, is that interest pay interest, okay? So you are going to receive interest over the interest that you have already. So let's understand how, how this works. So let's do the following cash flow. I have, let's say C0, so my capital at time zero. And then let's assume that we have a bunch of periods, okay? So let's assume that you want to know what is my future value after N periods, okay? So now let's, let's do this by, by steps. So I have I, and I will assume that I is requested in each period, okay? So and then this, uh, let's do N minus one, so is I, okay? So tell me one thing, guys. What is going to be the interest that you're going to make by having your, your money one period? What is going to be the interest? So if this is 10% and this is 100, so what is the interest that you want to make in one period? Uh, 10. 10. So how do you compute that? It's simply uh, the interest rate times your, your value. Correct? Mm -hmm. Guys, if this is 10% and I have 100, yeah. so my interest that I, that I will make is 10. Agree? So how much money do I have at the end of first period? Well, I have C0 plus my interest. Agree with me? So mm -hmm. if I simply simplify here, I have C0, one plus I. So this is the amount of money I have at the end of period one, at the beginning of period one, end of period zero, beginning of period one. Make sense? So now what happens in period number two? So now I'm assuming that I'm not moving, withdrawing my money. So I have this money here. What is the interest that I will, I will create here? That interest at period two is going to be equal to one. This is my amount of money now. What? What money I have? Ten percent of that. Yes. So I, that is my interest rate, that multiplies this new this new fund, one plus I, correct? So the final money that I will have. So I will call this C one. I will call this C2. So C2 is going to be equal to what? A C1 plus my interest, correct? So C1, this, the, the fund that I started here is going to be C0, one plus I, plus the interest I, I've created in this period, I, C0, one plus I. So common factor, C0, one plus I, C0, one plus I, that multiplies one plus I. So if I simplify this one here, I have that C2 equals C0, one plus I squared, correct? Correct. Okay, if I do this exercise N times, what do you think is gonna happen here? What do you think CN is going to be equal to? Just take a look. C1 power one, C2 power two, and all the remaining part is the same. It's going to be C0, one plus i to the power what? N. N. Okay, so this is this is the question, guys. We're oopsie, we're going to be using all the time. Now we don't necessarily use C N C zero, but we call this one here future value equals present value one plus i to the n. Okay, future value equals present value one plus i. Well, normally we don't use a lot of future value, but we want to be, we want to compute the present value. Simple, right? The present value equals the future value, one plus i to the n. So this is one of the of the main equations. These two are the equations we're going to be using all the time. They are exactly the same as simply variations of the same equation. Got it? What is interesting, guys, is that i, when you have present value, this one here is called discount rate. And if you, if you work with one over one plus I, this is called a discount factor. Just name, just name guys, discount factor. Okay, copy and then we put some numbers here.
Questions, guys. We're going to do a lot of exercises in this class, but questions up to now. Sorry, so what's, what is the discount factor again? So oh, the discount is factor is, um, is simply notations. One over one plus I. I, we, we are going to put some numbers. So imagine if the if the discount rate is 10%, mm -hmm. okay, so assume discount, let's do one example, let's do red. Imagine the discount rate equals 10%, right? So the discount factor is going to be one divided by one on 1.1. Guys, please, what you need to do is next week, after next week, you need to bring your calculators, okay? We do, we do a lot of calculators on Excel. So my discount factor is going to be 0 0.9, 0 0.9, et cetera. Okay. These are just names, but at the end of the day, they do exactly the same stuff. Okay. Okay. Okay, guys, let's do some, some numbers. Let's put some numbers. Uh, let's do one example here. So let's do one example. Assume the following. Assume that you have 100 and just you have this 100 for two periods, uh, three periods. And then you want to know how much money you're going to have and assume that the, that the compounding interest rate equals 1% per period. Okay. So very easy question, do you agree? So basically what we're going to be doing is moving this 100 here. How do we move this, this 100 here? It's going to be 100 times 1.01, .01, correct? Guys, do you agree? So this is my new amount of money at time one. Then what I will do is I, I will have this money and move it to period two. What I do to move this to period two, well, this money to 1.01, .01, correct? And then if I want to move from two to three, <clears throat> I multiply all this part here by 1.01. .01. So if you, if you realize guys in this example, these rates are exactly the same. So I can write my equation as 100 times 1.01 .01 to the power three. And then that's what you get. Let me see 100 times. 1.1 power 3. So we have 133.1. Make sense? So what is the future value? So this one here is the, is the, is the value of my, of my funds at period 3. So that's why you write it. I'm sorry, Prof. Yep, what? Um, I think you used 10. Oh, yes. 10%. Uh, no, 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 one, one. Here, I'm using this number here. This one here was for another example. I'm using 1% per period. So I think the answer should be 100. Oh, you mean I, I use 110 in my calculator? You're completely right. Yeah. yeah, you're completely right. So this should be, should be what? Hundred what? Hundred three? You're in here. Oh, oh yeah, one oh three point zero three. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for calling this into my attention. Make sense to you? Questions. Okay, with this, with this example, we, we finish because we need to do, I need to use more time. So imagine guys that you have more or less the same example. I have 100, I have exactly the same periods, but now my, my interest rate is going to be 1%, 2% and 2%, for example. So tell me what is CN, C3.
Okay, one minute to do this. Guys, full calculators, please. This this class is a lot of action, so you need to be. Oops, sorry, what I'm doing. You need to be working in the class, okay? Okay, answers? Um, I get 105.08. 105.08, yeah. Good, so let's do this. Yeah, excellent. So basically what I'm saying is, okay, you need to move this 100. When you move the 100 to period one, you simply multiply times 1.01. .01. When you move this to time number two, all this money multiplied by 1.02. And moving to period three is 1.02 again, so I can do 1.02 squared, correct? Guys, do you agree? Yes. Yes, and then I have, I got 105.1? 0 0.08. Okay, questions? Questions, guys? No questions? Yeah, this was more than an introduction, I'm sorry. I just start moving ahead. Uh, no questions, guys? Please, if you can study, just review, and the first part of the of this class was a kind of what we're going to be doing, so you have an idea where, where, where we're going to be going. Uh, and this part here is already part of the, it was supposed to be part of the second class, but we had time, so that, that was a good investment. Okay, guys, if no questions, please, I'm available by, um, by email. Just email me if you need something. But as you see, we develop every single thing in the class, okay? So uh, perhaps from time to time, I will give you, if you want, you can read the books. It's not a big deal, but I do everything. So you're, gonna, you're going to understand what I'm doing. If you have questions, please ask me in class and participate in class. That, that's much appreciated now that I don't, really see you. When, when we are in class, guys, it's much simpler for me to see how you're following. If you are getting sleeping or I see your faces when you, when I see that you look, look at me as a Chinese professor, so I know that you're completely lost. But in this case, it's kind of more challenging, okay? So I, I see you in the small screens, yes, but I, I don't see all, all the time when I write. Got it? Make sense? Yeah. Okay, guys, so we stop here and we see you in, in a week then. Uh, Dr. Ringifo? Yes, please. Will the uh, recordings of the lectures be uploaded onto Blackboard? Or? You know, what, what, this is the discussions that we are having with, uh, with the university because university says that as soon as the, the experiment that we have had during the fall, sorry, not the spring and the summer were not so, not so successful, they say that they must be requested by you individually. And normally they say that this should be done if and only if you, you don't have a, you were unable to attend for some reason. Oh. Yeah, that's the policy here. Because you know what, what happened is last year, I assume it didn't happen to me, I think. You know, but we can make an agreement at the end of the day. But guys, part of, that, of, the, of the training, really seriously, take it as if I am with you in a classroom. If I am with you in a classroom, you're going to be copying this stuff, okay? Remember that you copy. How do you do that? If I'm in a classroom with you, you're going to be copying and understanding. Copying by copying, you're going to understand this stuff, guys. So that's why I, I can slow down. I will, I will make available this video to everyone, but please be sure next time that you're ready to, to copy. And, and the bill, that's, that's policy. That's what they, they told us a week ago on the, on the same information is that we need to have, we need to support why do we provide you with the videos. I don't know if they are going to ask that in, in reality, but you need to tell me, hey, professor, I will not be able to be here. Please, can you send me the, the recording? All right. Got it? Okay. But I will make available this part here. And, yeah, no, and I understand. I understand why they are, they are requesting that. Because, of course, they want to be sure that, indeed, you are not simply turning on, turning on that.